Citizens often have questions or would like more information on specific topics, projects, and or processes in city government. We have designed a show to do just that. Through a series of discussions with Mayor Randy McClement and key city staff and guests, we hope to educate, clarify, and update our viewers on a variety of current city topics. I am Susan Harding, and welcome to City Issues. Sort of transportation, at least uh, it's a walking model ability to get people through our city. Right. We would like more vehicles. information about specific topics, projects, and or processes. Since 2003, the city has held the annual Fair Housing Conference with community partners. Today, we are talking with Matt Davis, Division Manager of Comprehensive Planning, and Aline Barnhard, Administrator of Community Development Block Grants, also referred to as CDBG. Each year, April is proclaimed Fair Housing Month in the city of Frederick. Thank you, Aileen and Matt, for joining us today to discuss Fair Housing, the Fair Housing Commission. and. Um, I'm going to let the mayor start off the uh, discussion. Yes, again, thank you guys very much for coming. Oh, thanks for, for having us. Perfect, great opportunity to, to talk about um, a topic that maybe people don't think about all the time. So this is a good, I think it's a good opportunity to, to say, to get out this information to our, our citizens. So, you know, either one, Eileen, Matt, um, why, what's, why is fair housing so important? Fair housing is important because it really allows person to choose where they want to uh, where they want to live, and it's important because it opens up so many more opportunities and access for the type of life that they want to live. So that's why it's important. And um, there have been great strides, you know, in our uh, history to make sure that those uh, rights are afforded to all people. Great. What are what are some of the things that we do in the city to promote fair housing? Well, one of the big things is what we're doing right now, which we've never done before. Uh, we have a Fair Housing Commission that Eileen will probably go into a little more detail in a bit. But uh, as we were sitting around kind of thinking about with the commission, what can we do to promote fair housing? The idea came up that, hey, we should contact the mayor's office and see if we could do a city issue segment. Uh, that would be a great way to get out, get out the word. Just like you said in your intro, a lot of people just, they really don't think about it. And then it really is important that, you know, that everyone's cognizant that um, fair housing discrimination still exists. And so a lot of times it's, it's unintentional even. It's not, you know, it, it's not, oh, I'm not renting to that person, but they have some preconceived idea about something and someone's not able to rent or buy a home. And you know, it, it really wasn't a malicious act, but still it's a violation of fair housing. And we want people to, you know, just be aware of, of you know, who's protected and who's not within, you know, in, in the housing realm. And that's a good point too, is you make a point that when people may hear fair housing, maybe people may think about just a home but it's across the board, it's the rental, it's ownership, you know, it's across the board. Um, and, and Matt mentioned the commission. Eileen, tell us a little bit about what the commission does. Uh, the city ordinance in, uh, allowed for a fair housing commission uh, back in the uh, late 60s, and in 2002, uh, the housing ordinance was updated, and in, uh, the, that administration impaneled a commission. So we've had a fair housing commission in its existence since 2002. We actually have two original members, Kay Gant and Nelson Saylor, who we're very happy. They've been quite the authority over the years to help guide Great. the commission um, in keeping us going. We have uh, an event coming up in April. We celebrate April as Fair Housing Month because that's when uh, the National Fair Housing uh, Act was signed into law. So we always do uh, an event in April. We celebrate April as Fair Housing Month uh, to promote awareness and education. It's held at the Municipal Office Annex. We offer uh, one and a half uh, continuing education credits for uh, the Maryland licensed real estate agents uh, so that they continue to be aware of what the regulations are for fair housing. Uh, we also uh, acknowledge our winner of the uh, poster contest. And this is a contest that is uh, promoted throughout Frederick County for students age um, from kindergarten through eighth grade. And it, there's a theme always on fair housing. So the winners are selected. There's three 
finalists that are selected based on the artwork um, that best represents that theme, and then one winner is chosen. So that winner is announced at the Fair Housing Conference by you, and uh, that child gets to go to the State House in Annapolis and meet the governor. And it's great. It's one of the fun things that I get to do as mayor is to, to go and present these to uh, the students, because they do they have great artwork, and we display their artwork throughout the, in the city in, in the, throughout the month, and it gets them at an early age to start thinking about fair housing. You know. And that's a great point. It's, it's like so many other things with social issues. It really starts with the kids. And if you can kind of get them ingrained early that we think about these things, you know, then hopefully we'll eventually wipe out housing discrimination altogether. And it says something too, to have two original members that have been on the commission for, you know, what, 14 years. It shows the, the dedication they have to this they do. They have issue. quite commitment, mm -hmm. you know. It really is just um, really a pleasure to work with them all. And, you know, some come, some go for different reasons. So we've actually had one who uh, recently was reappointed. He had moved out of the city, and so he had resigned his commission. And then when he came back, he asked, because there was a vacancy, to rejoin. So, you know, they must like it, which we're happy. That's great. <laughs> what, what would you, what, do you, what can you tell the, um, the citizens um, if they feel they've been discriminated against? Uh, What's the process? Well, we have a rules of procedure, which, are, which is, allows for in the ordinance. And what somebody would do if they feel they have been discriminated against would be to contact my office. And then they would come in in person and file um, a complaint. Then uh, they would sign it. Then that would be forwarded to the commission for their review. And then the, the process would continue on from there, depending on you know, how the commission uh, viewed the, the situation. Good. At least we know um, how it, that, it's good information because people may not know that you actually can come in. And, and, and the commission has taken an active, a more active role uh, with working with the NACs. They now uh, wanted the, to to further the outreach is to go do a road show, so to speak, mm -hmm. and go out to the NACs and explain to them what the commission is, what they do, and how they could file a complaint and to let them know what the protected classes are. And the more information we can get out, the better. Um, I know when I come to do the presentations, I see uh, those that are participating in that, that, that day that you have and, and the, uh, the credits that they get. And the number of real estate agents, I mean, the room's always packed, you know. Um, so I'm glad to see that there's, you know, participation from the realtor community as well, you know, so. It really is. I think everybody, like as Matt mentioned, um, people always want to be aware. They want to make sure that, you know, they are not doing something unintentional. Right. And that's what you're here for. You're just help to guide along and make sure that things are going in the right direction, you know, and provide information. So um, well, we think it's great, you know, and, and we want to be able to provide a broad reach of services. And, and this is one that, you know, we're very proud of. Um, and again, as we said earlier, things like this that involve the youth, it gets them to that education early. You know, and uh, we appreciate the fact that you guys are out there doing that. Is there anything else that you'd like to cover that we haven't asked? Well, I think one kind of interesting point is that the city actually has more protected classes than even are protected by the federal government at this point. Um, and during your uh, two administrations, I think you've passed at least two amendments to our fair housing ordinance. And Eileen could probably speak a little more specifically about the protected classes and, you know, who is protected and, and what, this, what the groups that the city has offered protection to that maybe the feds haven't just yet. Well, we have, you know, there's the basic, which is, you know, race, color, religion, sex, natural origin, uh, familial status, disability. Uh, the city, since its ordinance was uh, first revised in 2002, has added source of income, sexual orientation, age, gender, identity um, as protected classes. And, and that mirrors the state of Maryland. So Maryland and Frederick are a little more ahead of the, the federal government. Good. Shocking, I know. <laughs> and at our April 6th workshop at 3 o'clock, Wednesday, April 6th, Mayor McClement will proclaim April Fair Housing Month and will present a proclamation. To the Fair Housing Commission. The Fair Housing Commission, yes. I always look forward to that. Anything else you guys want to add? Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate you taking your time to come out and, and, and talk about this important subject. Thanks for letting us get the word out. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.